Okay, for today's class, I'll be discussing network cabling devices and equipments. So these are the different network cables, uh, different network devices and equipments used in uh, networks. Okay, so we have the different jacks that being used in network, not only in network, but also in telecommunication. So we have what we call as the RJ or the, R or the registered jack. So it is a standardized telecommunication network interface for connecting voice and data equipments to a service provided by a local exchange carrier of long of long distance carrier. So we have the RJ11 or the, or the registered jack 11. So the most widely implemented registered jack in telecommunication. This is specifically for telephones, uh, uh, telephone lines. So this is how the RJ11 looks like, or the registered jack 11. So for the pin configuration, so uh, the telephone line do have four colors. So we have the black, red, green, and yellow. Okay, so that's the RJ11 pin configuration. And for analog phones, if you, if, uh, you are using analog phone, so basically, uh, if you're if if the orientation of the wires is uh, is uh, is reverse, so that will still function. Okay. So for example, if the green and red as is interchange uh, uh, are interchange, so uh, basically it will still work. Okay. So there's no polarity in terms of the pin configuration. Okay? So but the standard is the black, re red, green and yellow. Okay? So this is a telephone flat wire. Okay? So we also have the multi-pair UTP or the uh, multi-pair cable. So or original known as if, uh, known as event count color code. It's a color code used to identify individual conductors in twisted pair wiring for telecommunication. This is also used for telecommunication telecommun connectivity. So if you need multiple wires for connecting telephone, so you can use a multi-pair multi cable. Okay? So for a single cable, you have multi-pair uh, multi twisted wire. Okay? So... It may uh, uh, available uh, cables may be twenty five pairs, uh, fifty pairs, or one hundred pairs. So, in a single cable, you have multiple twisted copper copper wires here. Here, okay. So this is the the purpose of this one is to distribute telecommunication uh, connection. So on a single cable. Okay, so if this, if you, if you're going to use a 25, 25 pair uh, UTP uh, multi-pair, so this is the color coding. Okay, so we have the white here paired with blue, orange, green, red, and gray. So we have the red, black, yellow, and purple here okay so paired with the series of blue orange green red and gray okay so we have both we have the 110 pair block so it, it is a type of punch block used to terminate runs on premises wiring in a structured cabling system so part of the structured cabling system sometimes requires you to use uh, to connect telecommunication equipments especially analog phones, or our, our example is analog phones, and other types of uh, uh, connectivity. So, so you can use the 110 pair block. So if uh, from the previous slide, so uh, there's what we call as the multi-pair cable. So that multi-pair multi -pair cable is terminated on a 110 pair block. So... This is the termination of the multi-pair 
cable. Okay? So this is how it looks like when it is terminated on the 110 pair block. So this is your 25 pair multi pair. So uh, wires are, is, is inserted on the 110 pair block. Okay, so we have also RJ45 or the register jack 45, a commonly used name for uh, for the 8 pin, uh, 8 configuration modular connector used in Ethernet and other, other data links. So this is the RJ45. Okay, so for RJ45, we have the T568A and T568B pin configuration. So that's the EIA standard or the, or the Electronic Industries Association standard for RJ45. So we have for T568A, we have the white green, green, white orange, blue, white blue, orange, white brown, brown. And for T568B, we have white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white, brown, brown. So always remember that the pin should be facing in front of you when you are crimping RJ45. Okay, so we have also shielded RJ45. So shielding prevents interference or the EMI and RFI or the electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference. Okay, so we also have the grounding. So it drains electro electrostatic from the cable preventing damage to equipment and has nothing to do with the speed. Okay, so this is how the it looks like the the metallic shielded RJ45. So basically, it is used mostly for outdoor uh, connectivity. Again, to prevent interferences coming from the electromag electromagnetic interferences and radio frequency interferences. Okay. So that's the purpose of the metallic shielded. Since that is deployed or the device is deployed uh, outdoor. So the tendency is it can absorb electromagnetic interferences and radio frequency interferences. Okay. So that's the metallic shielded RJ45. So we have also the rubber boots when we are crimping a UTP and crimping RJ45. So we are uh, sometimes we need to use a rubber boot. So this rubber thing is known as plug boot. A booted cable has the plug boot on the on the Ethernet patch cable end of the connector. Okay, so this is what the rubber boot looks like. Okay. So before you crimp RG45, you have to insert first the rubber boot. Um, the function of the rubber boot is First, it can prevent the connector clip from flipping up or even breaking off the cable, okay? So if you are going to look at the RJ45, there's the, the clip there. So to prevent the clip uh, uh, from, uh, from, flip from, uh, from flipping up or even breaking off the cable, so you can use the rubber boot, okay? Second is, it is also a protection for your own nails, okay? So imagine you imagine you a bunch of cable uh, on a data center or a, or a open bay rack or a data cabinet. So basically, uh, there's a tendency na, uh, now your nails will be, uh, or, or uh, or the, the, the part of the RJ45, like say for the clip, uh, na masugatang kayo on the, on the, on, on pulling the cables. Okay? So that's one uh, purpose of the RJ45 boot. It is also a protection for your own nails. Okay? Number three, prevent the clip from stocking on a bunch of cable when pulling, when pulling. Okay, so imagine you know, if you have so many cables, which is magkakasama na siya. Okay, let's say for example, if, you're, if your RJ45 don't have a rubber boot, so if you're going to pull, let's say for example, nakatali siya. So if you're going to pull, to pull this cable, 
So what will happen is sometimes the clip is uh, sasabit on the other cables. So uh, for you to be able to pull it ng mas madali, so the, the rubber boot prevents it from stocking up on a bunch of cables. Okay, so you have the patch cord or patch uh, cable. So it is our patch lid is an electrical or optical cable used to connect or patch in one electronic or optical device. Okay, so this is a patch cord. So you can, uh, there's an available or you can buy uh, a, f a pre uh, fabricated uh, pa uh, patch cord or patch cable. Okay, so patch cable do have different colors. So sometimes, or most of the time, we need to have color coding on our cables to represent, for example, uh, the blue one is for the first floor of a building. The red one is or for the second floor of the building. Okay, to identify the location of the cable. Especially for mga termination or uh, patching of mga patch panel and uh, mga open bay rack or server. So, uh, para you can easily identify the purpose of that patch cord. Okay, so we have the Keystone module. So, it is a standardized snap-in package for mounting a variety of low-voltage electrical jacks or optical connectors in a Keystone wall plate, face plate, surface mount box, or a patch panel. Okay, so this is usually the termination on the end of, uh, let's say, for example, on uh, on the termination on the wall. So that's a keystone module. So again, so we have the standard pin configuration. So you can follow the standard pin configuration. This represents the T568A and this is, represents the T568B. And this is the color. White, orange, orange, white, blue, blue. So it means the, the wire should be inserted properly according to the pin configuration. Okay? So your keystone module do have the label for the uh, configuration that you're going to use, it's whether it's a T568A or T568B. So since we are using um, mostly standard is the T568B. Okay, we have the face plate or the data outlet, also referred to as a wall plate, outer, outer outlet cover or socket cover, used with keystone module for connectivity of networks on walls. So you you terminate the end of the cable using the keystone. Once it is uh, mounted on a wall, so you can use a fa face plate. Okay, so this is a single port face plate. So you have multiple port face plate. So this is an example of a dual port face plate. Okay, so this is mounted on the wall. So we also have the sur surface mounted box. So ito yung mga dinidikit na lang on the wall. So you open this sur surface mountain box, then there's a, a termination of the UTP cable inside. Then you can just stick the box on the wall, okay? So no need for uh, electrical junction boxes uh, to mount the face plate, okay? So all you need is the surface mountain box uh, just to... Uh, uh, for the termination of the UTP cable. Okay, so we have the patch panel or patch bay, patch field or jack field is a device or unit featuring a number of jacks, usually of the same or similar type for the use of connecting and routing circuits for monitoring, interconnecting, and testing circuits in a convenient, flexible manner. Okay, so this is us usually used for a uh, data center, uh, open bay rack, data cabinet, Okay, so basically this is how the patch panel looks like. So this is uh, 4, 8, 12, 16. 
So this uh, this is a 24 port patch panel. Okay, the concept is uh, this is a series of termination of multiple UTP cables. Okay, just like with the concept of uh, of termination on the on on wall termination. So you connect it to a keystone module. So the concept is the same. So at the back, it, it looks like a keystone module, okay, or multiple port, or multiple keystone module, which is organized in a patch panel. Okay, so this is a multiple termination of UTP cable. Okay, so this is how the termination looks like. Uh, at the back of the patch panel. Okay, so we have the open bay rack, so mounting rack for switches, patch panel, and other, and other networking devices, and a closed rack for devices. Okay, so uh, this is used for mounting uh, different devices, like for example, switch, patch panel, to organize or to, to organize your cable, or, okay? And since this is an open bay rack, it means it is not enclosed. So most probably you are going to just uh, 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 mount uh, switches, patch panel, and other devices, which is not critical in terms of uh, security access. Okay, because this is uh, uh, this is not enclosed. So. This is how it looks like, okay? So once the devices like patch panel, uh, fiber optics, uh, ODF, uh, UPS, and other devices, so this is how the termination looks like. So this is part of the cable management. So it may be a central uh, uh, termination of all the cables Let's say, for example, in the building, so this is the open bay rack. Okay, so we have all the server rack. A 19-inch rack is a standardized frame or enclosure for mounting multiple electronic equipment modules. Each module has front panel that is 19 inches or 48.3 centimeter wide. Okay, so the server rack is mounting, especially for the, from, the, from the turn itself, uh, servers. So basically, it is enclosed. So part of it is the security of security is the physical access. So basically, server racks are uh, servers are mounted on the server rack for security purposes. Okay, but the concept is the same. You can also mount switches, uh, routers, uh, firewall, UPS on a server rack. The only difference between the open bay rack and the server rack is that the server rack is enclosed, and then. And part of it is because of the security on the physical access. Okay, so this is how the server rack looks like. Okay, so we have data cabinet. So this is usually mounted. Uh, it's, it may be a floor mounted or a ceiling mounted. So it depends on the, uh, on the deployment or the installation. Okay, so if you don't have so many devices, uh, an open bay rack may consume a larger space. For example, if you don't have a room for, for mounting the open bay rack, so you can use a data cabinet, especially if the devices are not that so many. Okay, kung hindi naman ganun kadami yung devices mo, so you can always use a data cabinet. Okay, so this is... Uh, the concept is it's just like a server server rack, except that it's uh, a little bit smaller because you only mount usually mga switches or uh, mga switches, okay? So let's say, for example, a small termination or few termination of cables on a building. So instead of using the entire open bay rack because it will consume space, so yeah, you can use a data cabinet. Okay, so we have uh, network media types. So we have the twisted pair cable or the 
The straight plane cable is a type of cabling that is used for telephone communication and most modern Ethernet networks. Okay? The pairs are twisted to provide protection against crosstalk, the noise generated by, adja by adjacent pairs. Okay? The purpose of making the wires twisted so is to prevent uh, noise or absorption of noise uh, gen generated by adjacent pairs. So yung katabi niyang mga wires. Okay? They also cancel out eh, any outside magnetic fields. Okay, so that's 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 the reason why the pa the pairs are twisted. Okay, para hindi uh, magabsorb agad na mga interferences uh, from adjacent wires and also from outside source. Okay, so we have the twisted pair cable or uh, the UTP cable. So UTP cable is a medium that is composed. Of pair of wires, UTP cable is used in a variety of networks. Each of the eight individual copper wires in UTP cable is covered by an insulating material. In addition, the wires in each pair are twisted around each other. Okay, features of UTP cable. So speed and throughput, uh, it may uh, transmit from 10 to 1,000 Mbps. Average cost per node is least expensive if you're going to compare it to fiber optic cable. Media and connector size is small. So the, the jack or the connector is uh, usually small. Maximal cable length. So the maximum distance for UTP cable is uh, uh, around 100 meters. So if you're going to, uh, to extend beyond 100 meters, you have to use a repeater or a switch. Okay, so this is the UTP cable. Okay, so we have the commonly used types of UTP cable. So we have the CAT1, so used for telephone communication, not suitable for transmitting data. So specifically, that is only used for uh, telephone, the telephone connectivities. CAT2 capable of transmitting data at speeds of, of up to 4 Mbps. So that's too slow for, uh, uh, for present network data transmission. CAT3 are used in 10 base T networks, can transmit data at speeds up to 10 Mbps. Okay, from 4 Mbps, the CAT6 is being uh, upgraded into 10 Mbps, but at present, uh, it is not. Uh, uh, it is not. Uh, it's it's still slow, okay? Because we are at present, we are most of the devices or uh, especially newer devices operates on a one Gbps network data transmission. We have CAT4 used in token ring networks can transmit data at speeds up to sixteen Mbps. We have the CAT5 can transmit data at speeds up to 100 Mbps. So the CAT5 only operates at 100 Mbps, okay? No matter your network interface card or switches uh, operates on 1 Gbps, if you're going to use CAT5 cable, so the, data, the network data transmission will only be 100 Mbps. We have the CAT5e used in networks running at speeds up to 1,000 Mbps or 1 Gbps, okay? So for newer deployment, for example, for, uh, especially for newer devices, so uh, especially for gigabit devices, so to maximize the speed, you have to use CAT5e uh, cable. CAT6 typically, or, or Category 6 cable consists of four pairs of 24 American Wire gauge, copper wires, CAT6 is currently the fastest standard for UTP cable. Especially if you're going to deploy CCTV as much as possible, you can. Uh, you have to use uh, CAT6 cable. Uh, pero still, CAT5e will work. Uh, but just to maximize the transmission speed, especially for larger deployment. So CAT6 will handle the most traffic compared to cat 5 Okay, so this is a table, uh, the data rate from one, from CAT1 to 1 Mbps, up to CAT7, up to 10 Gbps. There are available network technology which operates on a 10 Gbps. 
but oh, expect it's expensive compared to the uh, 1 Gbps network transmission. Okay, so we have the STP or the switch uh, switch shielded twisted pair. Uh, so the STP reduces electrical noise both within the cable or and from outside the cable or the EMI and RFI. Okay, so this is a shielded twisted pair. Usually, this is used for outdoor deployment. Okay, so it usually it is usually paired with the metallic shielded RJ45. Okay, so we have the fiber optic. So one of the fastest or the latest transmission medium for telecommunication. So it utilizes light wave transmission to carry or send information. Okay, so fiber optics transmit data in a form of light, and light travel faster than electronic signals or, or electricity. Okay. So advantage over other media, so large bandwidth. So basically, you can uh, maximize or you can, uh, the fiber optic cable provides larger bandwidth compared to a CAT5 cable, CAT5E cable. Okay. Second is smaller diameter. So the wire is smaller compared to the uh, UTP cable, the, uh, the twisted pair cable. So you, uh, you can... Uh, uh, run multiple fibers on a smaller a diameter size cable. Okay. Third is negligible crosstalk. So uh, since the transmission is uh, is through light, so basically it is or uh, it is immune to different interferences in terms of electronic signal. Okay. So because uh, your data transmission runs on a fiber connectivity on, on a fiber connectivity or uh, through light so basically uh, it will not absorb interferences coming from let's say electro electromagnetic interferences and radio frequency interferences okay fifth is high quality trans 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 transmission at long distance okay so basically in terms of the distance that, that it can provide you uh, for connectivity is uh, is too uh, uh, is masha is malayo okay so mean to say compared to the cat5 e uh, cat5 cable or cat5 e cable you are only limited to 100 meters okay so if you're going to extend you need to another device Unlike with fiber optics, since transmission is through light, so mas malaki yung covered niya na distance. Okay, limitations, cabling, splicing, and connecting fibers need expertise. Okay, since uh, it requires expertise when you are connecting or uh, connecting fibers, cabling, and splicing. So there should be a training on how to uh, do the, the fiber connectivity the fiber splicing, the fiber cabling. Okay? Second is non-conductor. So, since the data transmission is through light, so you cannot pass through other form of, uh, of, of, of source. For example, you cannot run a, a POE device on a fiber optic cable, okay? Because POE devices runs on electricity. Okay, so that's uh, the, because uh, data is represented by light uh, transmission, so it's non-conductor. Okay, next is high cost in low bandwidth application. Baka naman you are using a fiber optic cable, but your uh, distance that is covered is hindi naman ganun kahaba. And at the same time, the application is not that bandwidth consuming. Okay. So this is the fiber optic properties. We have the coating or the, sh the, the coating of the cable. We have the cladding and the core itself. This is the fiber core. Okay. So the cladding prevents the light from passing outside the cable. Okay. So yun yung purpose of the cladding, to prevent the light para hindi siya lumabas on the core. Okay, or, or on the cable itself. 
Okay, so the cladding prevents it from uh, from the light to pass out of the cable. Okay, so we have types of fiber. We have the multi-mode and the single mode. Okay. So this is the uh, optical fiber cable construction. Okay. So we have multiple fiber strands here. And you have the core protection or the cladding. And you have the buffer to, uh, tubing. So may mga fiber cable kasi which do have multiple buffer. Or may, may, ibig sabihin, multiple sets of optical fiber. Okay? So, so color coding, we also have the fiber buffer number. Let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or the 6 uh, fiber core. Okay? And you have the buffer color. Okay? To identify, kung yung terminate mo end to end. Okay? So you have the buffer here, and inside the buffer, do have multiple optical fiber. Okay? So this is also the buffer color, and this is the fiber core. Okay, so this is the optical link component. Siyempre, we have the transmitter and the receiver. So, meron din man tayong tinatawag na fiber converter. So, from fiber connectivity to the UTP or the Ethernet connectivity. So, it converts the fiber link into, uh, into Ethernet connectivity. Okay, so we have the fiber patch cord. So, kung yellow, usually that's a single mode uh, fiber patch cord. And kung orange, that's a multi-mode fiber patch cord. Okay? So, we have also different network devices. We have the repeater. So, in telecommunication, a repeater is an electronic signal that receives a signal and retransmits it. From the word itself, so it repeats the signal. So we have types of repeater. So we have the telephone repeater. It's an amplifier in a telephone line that's used for telephone uh, line communication. Optical repeater, an, uh, an optoelectronic circuit that amplifies the light beam in an optical fiber cable. So uh, that's, uh, that's another repeater type which is used for fiber optics. Radio repeater, a radio re receiver and transmitter that retransmits a radio signal. Okay, so this is an example of a telephone repeater. Okay, so this is an example of a signal booster. So there's what we call a signal booster, especially for telecom, uh, for telecom telecommunication signal for cell phone. So usually this is the outdoor antenna. So this is the outdoor antenna, and you connect it to the indoor access point okay so basically this outdoor antenna absorbs or receives the signal from a telecommunication uh, a provider or uh, cell sites okay and then it regenerates and if a nga dito sa equipment then ilalabas na on the access point Okay, for the uh, for the cell phone signal booster. Okay, so alimbawa kung on a on a particular room in a building, may na yung signal. So you have the outdoor antenna, ilalabas nyo siya, then connect it to the device and connect it to the access point, which is inside the room that will regenerate the signal of a cell phone uh, signal. Okay, so this is the radio repeater. If you're familiar with the walkie-talkie, so we have the radio repeater here. We have the Wi-Fi repeater. Okay, so it repeats or extend wireless networks. We have the optical repeater for fiber optics uh, repeater or for, for, for the fiber optic signal. 
wired network repeater. Okay? So, this is for mga LAN uh, repeater or Ethernet repeater. Okay, so we have also the hub, also called a network hub. is a common connection point for devices. And basically, uh, a hub is a, in a hub, a frame is passed along or broadcast to every one of its port. It doesn't matter that the frame is only destined for one port. Okay, just like comparison with a function of a hub and a switch. Okay. So actually, the hub is just like a multi-port repeater. Okay. So a hub is just like a multi port repeater. So para yung isang repeater mo, uh, you have only have a multi-port repeating device. You have the switch. Okay? So also, also called switch, switching hub. It is a network hardware that connects devices and computer network by using packet switching to receive and forward data to the destination device. Okay? Unlike with the hub, the switch identifies the destination port. Okay, so we have the types of switch. The unmanaged switch are frequently used in home networks, small companies, and businesses. So you cannot do anything or configure the switch. Uh, it only functions as a switch. It does not necessarily need to be configured or watched or monitored. Okay, so we have the managed switch. The advantage of managed switches is that they can be customized to enhance the functionality of a, cer of a certain network, okay? So from the word itself, you can manage, you can configure, uh, you can do several changes on the configuration to achieve a particular functionality on the network. For example, VLAN configuration uh, uh, on, on the switch. So that's the purpose of the managed switch. At the same time, you can also monitor the performance of what's happening on the, uh, on the nodes on that particular switch. Okay, so if you're going to buy uh, network switches, so you have to consider the following number of ports. Uh, if you're going to use 8 port, 16 port, or 24 port, it depends on the requirements. Speed, are you going to use 10, 100, 1000, or 10,000 Mbps? It depends on the devices, okay? So, let's say, for example, if you only have 100 Mbps of devices, so, if you're going to buy 1 Gbps, syempre, hindi naman mama-maximize yung 1 Gbps because you have 100 Mbps devices. At the same time also, if you have 1 Gbps uh, function, functional devices, so, kung nagra-run yung mga network devices mo into 1 Gbps at bibili ka lang ng 100 Mbps uh, device, so, syempre, you cannot maximize the performance of the devices na 1 Gbps. Okay? So, you have to match what is needed in terms of network data transmission speed. PoE versus non-PoE devices are the power over Ethernet devices. So, there are devices which are PoE devices. So, you have to identify if you're going to buy PoE or non-PoE device. Okay? So, siyempre, PO, PoE device, uh, PoE switches are a little bit expensive compared to a non-PoE device. Rack mountain ball or vers versus des desktop switch. So, it is, uh, are you going to buy a switch that you can mount on a server rack, data cabinet, or open bay rack? Or you can just place it on a table uh, that's a desktop switch. Okay, so this, this is our example of unmanaged switches. This is our example of managed switches. This is an example of the GUI of a managed switch. Okay, so you can monitor the ports, you can configure the ports, uh, and, other, uh, and other configuration, it depends on the requirements of the network. Okay, so we have the PoE or the power over Ethernet. This allows a single cable to provide both data connection and electric power to devices such as wireless access points, IP cameras, and VoIP phones. Okay? So, PoE device switches allows to power on PoE devices. Okay? Just like yung mga access points, IP cameras, and VoIP phones. You are only using a single cable to have uh, its power and to have its connectivity. Okay? 
So the, for example, this is an uh, an ex this is an example of a PoE switch, and you plug in a PoE device all using a single, uh, let's say for example, Cat 5e cable. So basically, the LAN, the LAN and the power is combined on a single network cable. Okay. For example, this is also the PoE device. You power on an IP phone, a wireless LAN access point, a network camera. Okay. So the, the LAN, you only you are only using one cable to power on and to have the network connectivity of the devices. Okay. So this is a desktop network switch. Okay. This is a rack mountable uh, switch. Usually, there's a bracket for you to be able to mount it on an open bay rack, server rack, or data cabinet. You have the bridge. A network bridge, also known as an Ethernet bridge, connects two segments of a network together. The purpose of the bridge is to divide a network into manageable sections. Avoid collision among segments. Okay? Pero usually, parang hindi na masyadong ginagamit tong network bridge. Okay, to connect different two LANs to have interconnectivity. We have the router. It's a networking device that forwards data packets between computer networks, perform the traffic directing functions on the internet. Okay, so this is a, uh, the router can act as a switch. Okay, you can configure the router to access a switch or it can provide connectivity as a switch. Second is it can act as a DHCP server. So if you're going to deploy a router on your network, so you can configure it as a DHCP server or a source of IP on the network. Okay? So most routers now do have the wireless access point uh, uh, feature. So basically, your router can also act as a wireless access point. Okay? So we have also the fiber media converter. It's a simple networking device that makes it possible to connect to the similar media types such as twisted pair with fiber optic cabling. So basically, this is a converter which converts your fiber signal into Ethernet signal. Okay? So this is a fiber converter. Okay? From your fiber optic cable, so since the data is represented by light wave or light form, and it will not be it will it will now be converted into electronic signal okay so we have also the pabx or the private automatic branch exchange it's an automatic a telephone switching system within a private enterprise okay so we have the pabx system so it is actually a central di distribution for multiple telephone lines. So if you're familiar with local lines, okay, for example, you are dialing 111, then you connect to different local lines. So the PABX is the one responsible for distributing, di distributing the telephone uh, link to different local lines on the organization, okay? So this is a central device for telecommunication or the private uh, automatic branch exchange system. We have the VOIP or the voice over IP, also called IP telephony. It is a method and group of technologies for the delivery of voice communication and multimedia sessions over internet protocol networks such as the internet. Okay, so if you are familiar with analog, so for modern telecommunication, Ang ginagamit na is IP phone. So if you have the PABX system or the gateway of the telephone, basically you can now deploy IP phone. So since this is called VOIP, it means that it runs on a network. Okay, so this is an example of a VOIP a telephone. We have also NAS storage, so our network attached storage is dedicated file storage that enables multiple users and heterogeneous
heterogeneous client devices to re retrieve data from centralized disk capacity. Okay, so each NAS resides on the LAN as independent network node defined by its own unique IP address. Okay, so the NAS storage is storage which is connected to a network. Okay, so basically, uh, like with a USB, that is uh, dependent on where you connect it to a USB USB uh, port. Okay, so the NAS storage is connected to, for example, this is a switch, and you have the NAS storage. And computers on the network can now access the storage using the network connectivity. Okay? So, unlike with uh, storage sharing, kapag patay yung computer, hindi mo na ma-access. So, this acts as a standalone device for your storage on the network. Okay? Consideration on purchasing NAS device. Siyempre, storage space. What is the capacity that you're going to deploy for NAS storage? For example, 1 terabyte, 2 terabytes, 4 terabytes. Cost, siyempre, you have to consider cost. Siyempre, the larger, the, the, the number of port uh, base, uh, hard disk base na on a, on a NAS, siyempre, mas mahal. Okay? And at the same time, the number of hard disks that you're going to use is also expensive. To RAID or not to RAID, so uh, are you going to configure uh, some uh, uh, RAID technology? So the RAID is a is, uh, configuration wherein you can mirror uh, the hard drive para if a particular hard drive fails, meron kang mirror on a particular, on other hard disks. Let's say, for example, if your NAS is 4B, if you're, going, if you're, if you're not going to configure it as a RAID, so it will act as an individ individual. Anibaba, if you have four bay NAS, you have four hard drive, HD1, HD2, HD3, HD, HD4. Okay? If you're going to not configure it as RAID, so basically it will act as individual hard drive. You have four hard drives being used on the network. Uh, on the NAS drive, okay? Or the network, okay? But if, you, for example, if you're going to configure it as RAID 1 if or mirror, so this HD1 is a mirror of HD2 and HD3 is a mirror of HD4, okay? If HD1 fails, you still have the copy of the HD1 on HD2, okay? But the downside here is because of the cost because it only acts as a 2 hard drive, even though that physically you have four hard drives here, okay? Because of ray technology, you mirror pair of hard drive with one another, okay? So, syempre, uh, if you configure RAID, so you are consuming more hard disk compared to a non-RAID configuration. So, that's a little bit expensive in terms of uh, cost. But always, but syempre, you, uh, you have to consider the necessity in terms of backup of your uh, device or your data. Okay, number of hard drives, aesthetics, okay? Yung itsura or the, how the, the NAS drive looks like. Reputation, you, syempre, uh, you are storing data on a particular storage, so you have to consider brand, which is tested, that works well. Okay, this is how the NAS looks like. Okay, this is a two bay, two hard, hard disk. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, six bay NAS. Okay, so for example, you have 12 terabytes of six bay. Okay, so this is a uh, 8B. Okay, so we have CCTV, so closed circuit television, also known as video surveillance. It is the use of video cameras to transmit a signal to a specific place on a limited set of monitors. Okay, so we have the dome type camera. This is the dome type camera. This is the bullet type. 
This is a PTC or the pan, tilt, and zoom camera. So, there's you can control the movement of the camera. So, kaya tinawag siya na PTC or the pan, tilt, and zoom camera. We have the analog CCTV. We have the digital IP CCTV. So, this is now using Ethernet. We have the NVR or the Network Video Recorder. It is a specialized computer system that includes a software program that records videos in a digital format to a disk, USB flash drive, SD memory card, or other mass storage. Actually, this is the central device that controls the CCTV cameras. Okay? A typical central device. So, which connects your CCTV. This is your CCTV. You have the Network Video Recorder. And you have the monitor. And minsan meron may nabibiling manipulator uh, for easy access to the or control to the network video recorder. Okay? So the NVR is the central device which controls your CCTV cameras. Okay? Consideration on purchasing CCTV system. Siyempre, quality and output resolution. Okay? So, you have to consider output resolution or quality of the of the video, okay? Or the uh, or the camera, okay? Retention period. So, how long are you going to retain the recording? So, for example, are you going to retain up to two months of video recording ng network video recorder, okay? So, it's, uh, syempre, the longer the retention period, the larger hard disk that is being required. Okay? So, mas, mala, mas, mad, mas, mas madaming hard disk yung kailangan mo if you want to have a longer uh, retention period. Okay? O yung mga nasa save ng camera to the network video recorder. Okay? Location of installation. You have to study the location of the installation of the cameras. Okay? Siyempre, uh, ano ba yung makikita? Uh, what will be the angle being uh, monitored by the CCTV camera? So, you have to design the location of the installation properly. Okay, knowing what to cover. So, location, the angle. Okay, so we have the server. It's a computer, device, or program that is dedicated to managing network resources. Okay, servers are often referred to as dedicated because they carry out Hardly any other task apart from their server task. Okay? So, the so server are intended for uh, for providing services to network clients. Okay? So, we have two types of server. We have the tower server. So, it is a computer intended for use as a server and built in an upright cabinet that stands alone. It's just as like, like it looks like a, uh, a regular computer. So, it's, a sta it's just like a standalone computer. We have also the rack mounted server so you can rack uh, you can mount it on an uh, on a server rack it is a type of hardware that is placed in a downright horizontal rack rather than in an upright tower server system okay so this is a tower server it just uh, it, it is look uh, it uh, it looks like a desktop computer lang but syempre it's a, a high powered or high processing uh, uh, server, okay, because the task is to provide service to network clients in terms of, for example, application, web services, or any other system. Okay, so this is the rack mount server. So basically, the rack mount server can be deployed on a server rack, okay? So this is how the server rack uh, mounted so uh, the, the rack mount server looks like and how you mount it on a server rack, okay? So the another thing about a rack mounted server is you if you have if you if you're going to deploy multiple uh multiple servers, okay, basically it reduces the size or the space uh, uh, on the, uh, it reduces the size and space compared to a desktop or uh a tower type server. Okay, consideration of purchasing dedica dedicated server. Sh Siyempre, the budget. Okay, Siyempre, don't. If you're going to expect 
uh, uh, very high processing power server, syempre, you need to allot a, a larger budget for that particular server. Space, okay? So, you have to consider space. Are you going to use a uh, a tower-type server or a rack-mounted server? Storage, so the capacity of the server in terms of storage. Memory capacity, also the memory capacity of the storage. CPU support, the CPU or the processing power of the servers. Connectivity, what will be the connectivity? Are you going to use 100 Mbps connectivity on server, 1 Gbps, or you're going to jump into a 10 Gbps connectivity? Management, do you need to manage the server? Okay, so next is biometrics. Uh, uh, or I think lastly, this is biometrics. Uh, biometrics identification authenticates secure entry data and or access via human biological information such as spring fingerprints. So this is a biometric part. Uh, one ex good example of uh, use of biometrics is time and attendance and door access lock. Okay, so so for uh for up for door access. So instead of using the usual key. You can use a biometric to uh, to control how uh, opening and closing of uh, door access. Okay, so we have the fingerprint scanner, RFID. So that's an R uh, that's an RFID card scanned on an RFID scanner, palm scanner. Okay, so. so the palm is being uh, scanned for, for example, for data entry or time and attendance. Face recognition. Okay? So those are examples of uh, uh, biometrics. Okay? So that will be all for the discussion for today. So those are the networking cables, devices, and equipments.